here's a funny coincidence. I was just hanging out with some friends, and we were there's a hot sauce shop down the street from me. Okay. A hot sauce shop. Yeah, all they sell is hot sauce. Uh, okay. And I never see, like, any customers or anything in there. Or maybe I'll see, like, one. It's also a small shop. But anyway, I'm always constantly just curious how they stay in business because I don't see much in there. All they sell are small little bottles of hot sauce. Like, and rent around here is, you know, insane. Hmm. So, you know, I'm always just like, I wonder how they stay in business. Do they do and wholesale I, business? I don't know. I've never I've never gone in there. I've just, like, walked would, past the store. That would probably be what keeps them alive at that point. Uh, so, you know, I was going to my friend, and then later today, he sends me a message to a Reddit AMA. Yesterday, the guy who owns that store did an AMA. Oh, man. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know. What? what a coincidence, right? Yeah. So I messaged him, or I messaged, not him, I just, you know, replied to the AMA, like, how do, how do you stay in, bez- in business? Is there, like, actually a market for that around here? I'm super curious. So I'm, I'm, I want to know what he's going to say. Has he but, not responded yet? Or was I, like, it- just sent the message. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he just. So what do. you're saying is we could have breaking news on this podcast. I, I guess if you if you want if you remind me throughout this show, I could check Reddit and see if I'm, I get anything. But yeah, I'm, anyways, I'm reminding you every five minutes. I'm not actually going to. Fair enough. Uh, I just thought that was like a super strange coincidence, um, how the timing worked out for that. But anyway, uh, we were on our way to a burrito place called El Burrito Picante. Okay. Uh, they have a burrito size there called the donkey, which is two wraps. Ooh. So it ends up coming about like, like this. Like it's like a foot long, pretty pretty thick. I always get that. It's a it's a lot of food. So right now I'm currently in the state of like, my stomach is really full, but I just had all of this like kind of dry salty food. So I really want to drink water. But every time I drink water. It's just like, oh, stop! Your, your stomach can't take it. So I'm just, I'm in a bad place right now. That sucks. Yeah. So I'm gonna drink really a glass of water in front of you because I know, no, I'm definitely drinking water too. But my stomach doesn't <laughs> okay. like it. But I'm drinking a lot of water right now. <laughs> this is the water drinking podcast. We talk about different types of water here. Fuck! I don't have the water. L- <laughs> the latest flavor of Brita filter is in. I really wish you guys had told me about this segment before we went live. Got That's the water. beauty of improv. The you water never segment. Know. You the always got to be ready. I mean, yeah, you're right. I should have known. <laughs> the video game podcast that always starts with water talk. Got to have everything ready. Fuck me, I guess. I'm going to check Reddit. Nothing yet. Okay. We're going to talk about pens in the shapes of bullets. I've got you covered right here. That's kind of cool. Is that like a long bullet? It's... It's like a it's a rifle bullet for the movie Triple Nine. I went to a uh, one of those escape rooms and we won, and they gave us uh, this for some reason. Cool. So everyone in our group got a bullet pen. Nice. I've never heard of the movie Triple Nine before. Me neither. It came out like two months ago in theaters. I've not heard a thing about that. Uh, February twenty six. It says on the pen. <laughs> that two months. But, all right. Hey, good job winning. Was it cool? Yeah, this was also two months ago. Maybe three. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember if we talked about it or not, but anyway. Yep. Top Down Perspective, April 30th. Yeah. <clears throat> End of the month. Yeah, that's true. Hey. Tomorrow's May the 1st be with you. Yeah. That, that was my favorite slogan. Yep. For um, the- John's here. Paul's Yo. here. Yeah. Hi. Sean's here. I'm not sure if I'm asleep or if he, this he is didn't, real. I was going to say, he didn't say hi. Hey. <laughs> All right, John, it's the Comic Expo up in Calgary and Paul. Yep. I don't think, Paul, you're going to it, no? I'm not going, no. Why are you not going to the Comic and Entertainment Expo? Because I don't want to spend 50 bucks to spend more money and then go home. Is it that's, 50 bucks now for tickets? Uh, that's for just Saturday, I think. Yeah. What? No, Saturday, I, I think, it's 60 bucks, actually. No, it's oh. like 48 or something Saturday. I'm, I'm looking it up. Tomorrow right. is like 35. I'm still not spending money to spend money in a room crowded with people. No, that makes sense. I remember last time I went, it was like 30 bucks for the weekend. Last time I went, I was stoked, though, because like, there were some panels and stuff I wanted to see as well. And I like looked up the lineup. Like I would go there to just shop, basically, and say hi to a few people. 
that this, live in uh, the city that I live in. Like we could just <laughs> hang out whenever. <laughs> There's um, is there no special guests that you wanted to pay no, eighty bucks isn't. to have sign something of yours? Not this year. No, they're like even to just like see at all. Like who's the around. big guest this year? Uh, Stan Lee's back. Shatner's back. Uh, they had a bunch of people back out last minute. Because usually, well, I mean, St- Stanley's like always there. They got uh, <laughs> Cl- Clark Gregg. He's the Agent Coulson from like Agents of Shield and a bunch right. of the movies. Yeah. Uh, I'm literally just looking on their site right now. Okay. Because yeah. I remember, mind, I'm the guy who doesn't watch a lot of TV shows, and I could care even less about like the people that act in them generally. John Barrowman, the dude who was uh, Captain Jack Hartness from uh, Doctor Who. Okay, I don't want George Wood. He's there. All right. Last time I went was the big Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, the, that yeah. was that was the big year for that. That was like two or convention. three years ago, maybe three. Yeah, now. it would three. Yeah, yeah, I think it was a while ago. Mm-hmm. Um, that was huge, actually. That was when I got locked out with like fifty oh, other yeah. people in a ten-person room. Wrote a scathing thing about it, and then got a bunch of like negative press on them to the point where the Oh, runners of the expo at that time before they sold it messaged me and told me to desist <laughs> okay yeah that was i remember i had gone there in the morning and then my girlfriend at the time was coming later so i had to go outside to like meet her yeah and, and then getting back it. in was really bad did you get um, back in though we did there was a huge line but we kind of just went to the front of it where there was just a mass of people and then yeah. just kind of like slithered our way through it you got lucky then because a few of those masses of people did not move they all were sent home yeah there, yeah. yeah there was a lot it was of pretty rough there. that year is it that was equally bad. john have you been going this weekend i went thursday and friday and oh. i'm not going today and i'm not going tomorrow so so is it equally busy well saturday is the busiest day yeah. so and I heard like traffic was garbage around there, so it must have been packed. How was yesterday, though? Uh, not too bad. Okay. There was a fair amount of people there, but you could actually get around and do things. Uh, mm-hmm. Thursday was like Thursday's the day you always want to go to that con if you're going to go for shopping because there's it's like the lightest crowd, and everyone has, still has all their stuff, so you yeah. can just be like. But Sundays I, where I, all the I've deals realized. happen. Yeah, but I realized like this year that I really only go to buy things. You don't say. Yeah. So, like, I even, even, like, I didn't even want to get anything signed. Charles Martinet was there, and I'm like, I, I want, I don't have anything I really want him to sign. Yeah. Okay. So, I just go and buy games. So, is that all you did this time? Is you buy games, no panels, no nothing? Yeah. What did you buy? If you can tell. I actually didn't buy much because taxes kind of kicked the snot out of me. But, okay. uh, I bought, uh, mainly, Sega Saturn stuff because cool. I finally got my multi taps. Yes. So now I have two multi taps for Sega Saturn. What's a multi tap? Uh, lets you plug in more than two controllers. Okay. So now I can plug in ten controllers to my Sega Saturn, and we can play ten player Saturn Bomberman. Yeah. Once I get ten controllers. How many games support that? I probably only Bomberman. Like Bomberman, basically. Yeah. Some other ones right. support like multi tap, but not ten person. I'm actually curious now. I'm going to look it up. Um, Attack Compatible Sega Saturn games. There's actually a surprising amount. Wow. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think of Guardian Heroes. That makes sense. That's six player. Oh, I've always wanted to play that. Duke Nukem 3D? Yeah. What? Is there like a multiplayer mode? Yeah, of course there was. On the N64, there was too. But it supports up to seven players. Okay, that's weird. Seven? That's weird. It's like some weird... PS3 how, seven player Bluetooth. How do you do thing? that? <laughs> you have like, holy shit! How do you do that? You have, holy unless it, it may, it says there's a mini game in the game. Maybe it's the mini game that's up oh, to seven players. Okay, sure. That makes more sense. What no, What did you pick up? At, what else did you pick up at the show? Um, one of those 3D controllers for the Sega Saturn. Uh, what is the what, one that comes with Knights? That? You You had one. Actually, no, you didn't have one when you went. Did your trip? I forgot about that. Uh, so a 3D uh, controller. It came. It comes with like a a thumbstick. I, it came with Knights in the Dreams. Here, I I'll put it on camera for the. Uh, yeah, no, my Knights was just in a, a normal CD case, and then I also got Christmas Knights, also just in a CD case. So this is the Sega Saturn 3D controller. So this it, uh, it's got a thumbstick, got a D pad. Yeah, I don't have one of those. 
It's got a switch and the six buttons and the, the triggers. So it's like an early Dreamcast controller, basically. Yeah, actually, you're right. No, it does look similar to that. The, the Saturn controllers I have is I have two of the standard ones. Yep. I have a mouse... Uh, that I that came with some dating sim, it must have, and then one that came with Magic Carpet, that I don't even remember what it looks like, but I think it had, it either had like a trackball in it or like an analog the stick. The controller that came with the uh, Magic Carpet should have been the 3D controller. Okay, I'm gonna I gotta look this up then because I know I I know my Magic Carpet is in a box. Like that's the one I just showed you was a North American one. I because you probably have the Japanese one, yeah, which I believe would have been like that peach white, like yeah, like the same the color beige. as my Saturn, yeah. Okay, yeah, I must, I do have one of those. I just didn't recognize it because mine is it's the white colored with the with the colored buttons and such. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the Sega Saturn like North America color scheme was all black. I kind of like mine more. No, that's fair. Isn't there a th like a third Saturn color? I thought. Um, there's like gray. There's there's like whitish beige. There's black and there's gray. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. And, and you have the black, you said. I have uh, for the system. Yeah. I have the uh, the whitish one. So the same one I have then. Yes. Okay. Cool. It, it looks like there's a gold one, or am I just be looking at like custom ones? Sega so Game Gear was pretty cool, right? Oh yeah, Spy Gadget says that was the inspiration for the Dreamcast controller, which in turn became the starting version of the Xbox controller before they remodeled it. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, now I can start working towards getting uh, 10 Sega Saturn controllers and get some 10 player Saturn Bomberman on the go. That yeah. seems like... That doesn't seem worth it. <laughs> eh. I can barely justify having like more than two controllers for any system. I mean, I go to events and I run shit. I, so. I guess so. Yeah. I guess so. I can justify it at least. I just I I might be able to get ten people together like once who would want to play <laughs> Sega Saturn Bomberman. And a few of those people I would have to just be kind of coercing because they probably couldn't care less. <laughs> they just right. want to like hang out with friends. Right, yeah. And that's it. Like once in my entire life, maybe. Uh but yeah. Anyway, um, any other comic expo uh, stuff to mention? Uh, not really. What was the best costume you saw? Oh shit! I saw an Italian Spider Man, which made me happy. Great. All right. Saw Spider Jerusalem. That was also good. Um, there's always that one dude who's in the Warhammer 40k outfit, which is always pretty sweet. Um, Did you see Master were Chief? There were eight. Yeah, there was one. I saw a lot of Harley Quinns. I think that yeah. was the costume of the show yeah. this okay. year was Harley Quinn. Right. I think I've heard that pretty consistently over the last year. Yep. Uh, with um, Suicide Squad coming. Yeah. Was it Suicide Squad Harley or just a? Uh... Uh, every version. I yeah. saw cartoon Harley, comic Harley, and Suicide Squad Harley. Okay. All right. Lots of lots of Harleys. All right. I think cool. I think I even saw one of those anime Harleys. Like they were just like covering all bases. Girls love Harley Quinn. What what can I say? Yeah. All right. Um, well, no one cares about comic books. We're going to talk about video games. Sweet. Right. Nobody um, in the world cares about no, comic books. No. No. None. Um, I say that with framed comic books on my wall. Uh, <laughs> let's go into what we've been playing. I'm just gonna I'm gonna jump in because I have one game. And I'm just gonna get out of the way. Uh, yeah, I cool. finished Apollo Justice this morning. Cool. Nice. That last case is awesome. It's very different, isn't it? Uh, I'd say, like, the second half of it is very different, for sure. Oh, yeah, you're right. I forgot the first half's normal. The first half is normal, but then, then yeah, when, like, Phoenix Wright steps in, then it gets, like, crazy and just cool, and it just, like, ties the entire game together. Yeah, I think that, that was really well done. I'm just kind of bummed out that... Uh, they don't really take any of like the major plot changes from that point and bring it forward. Well, maybe they will going forward. Maybe they will. They like they always seem to be coming out with more Ace Attorney games. So. I guess, yeah, but they didn't do it in five. But so maybe in six. Well, yeah, in six, like Maya's coming back. So you know, they it, they they do bring six. some stuff back. I guess, but like six, most of it doesn't even take place in Japan, America, whatever country they've considered Phoenix Wright takes place in now. Yeah, I have no idea where that would take place, but. Isn't there also, like, an old, like, super old-timey Ace Attorney game coming out? 
Yeah, the one where like Sherlock Holmes is something like, like that. Yeah, that yeah. I don't know what's going on with that. I haven't heard anything about that in a while. Yeah, neither have I. But um, I I you know, oh, I thought Apollo is in six. Yeah. Okay, so there might be some stuff there. Yeah. No. So uh, Phoenix is on is wherever uh, Maya is, and uh, Apollo is handling the case that Phoenix was handling before he had to leave and go find Maya. Okay. Well, so it jumps back and forth between wherever, whatever location they consider Phoenix Wright to take place in and this island. Right. Well, I'm definitely interested um, because I knew I was getting near the end. I ordered Miles Edgeworth last week, so I should have that uh, sometime this week, and I'll j- jump into that. Uh, that'll have to be delayed though because Bravely Second is showing up tomorrow. Ooh, nice! nice. So I'm going to jump into that. Get my RPG on. Hopefully it's not as mind-numbing as Bravely Default gets. I don't know. I've started playing the demo of it, uh, and it's it's weird. Uh, so far, I don't like the music as much. Okay. Like the, battle, the battle theme's nowhere near as good as the first one. All right. Well, I mean, I'm going to be playing a lot of it on a train, so I won't be listening to it. No, that's fair. But um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, anyway, that's basically all I've played. I'm still playing some Enter the Gungeon. Uh, but nothing, nothing really new to report there. Uh, John, why don't you tell us what you've been playing? All right. So I was going to PAX East last week. Oh yeah. right, yeah. We got. We should have been talking about PAX. There's too many conventions. We can do now. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about PAX East. Um, I didn't do much there. Unsurprisingly, <laughs> I no. I did. A, I was in a Twitch tournament when I was there. Yeah. I, I was in a broadcast a tournament called the PJ Sultan of Stream. Yeah. Right. We talked about this briefly because I didn't yeah. know anything about. Do we this. want to say how well you did, or if people? I mean, sure. Let's let's talk about it. Did you win? Um, okay. Are you the I grand champion? I didn't, I didn't win, but I've qualified for the next round. And that's down here. Yes. Yeah. All right. So are you coming to TwitchCon? So I will be at TwitchCon. Dude, nice. we gotta hang out. Uh, they had sixteen competitors. Uh, I think eleven of them were picked by them, and the uh, five got in through uh, doing video videos to like say like they want to enter. Yeah, so I got I got picked that way through doing the video entry. Did you um, get like a green screen and did you do some like tricks? No, some I tricks. I did a video. <laughs> <laughs> I did some sweet skateboard tricks inside my house in front of a green screen. Yeah, and then like swap out the background so it makes like you're in space. <laughs> you know what? If I ever get a green screen, I am gonna. Is do Is there that. any way we yeah. can see that video? Uh, like right now. No, I mean like for anybody. I mean that- I'll. I'll, I'll, put, I'll show I it on know. stream at some point. I'll Probably okay. next time I talk about the Sultan on one of my streams, I'll probably show it. Oh, okay. okay. It has a gratuitous amount of Hulk Hogan in it, so... Great. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, so I got answered that. That was two days. That was uh, the first, like, the middle of Friday and the middle of Saturday. Um, they start off with 16 players, and we played this game that had just come out the day before called uh, Western Press. Yeah, I saw. Okay. So this was yeah, this is a dueling game where you're given like I think it's a combination of ten different buttons that you have to press. That's so it's directions and buttons, and you have to type it in faster than the other person. Every mistake you make, you get like a point three second penalty, and that adds to your time. So if the person like types it slower, but you screw it up more, you'll lose and stuff like that. So we did that. Uh, I made it. I got second place in that tournament because the guy that I fought. Knew the developers and have been playing the game for months. Yeah. There you go. Also, like, I, I choked pretty hard, too. He was a guy so. from Australia, right? Yeah, that was a dude called D. Yoshi. He's a pretty chill dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, he lo- looks a lot like Russell Brand, as he told everyone. So, mm-hmm. um, so the top Wait, he just that- kept walking around saying, I look like Russell Brand? No, during, this, <laughs> uh, during one of the matches, he just yelled out, like, we were, it was talking about looks, and we were like, I look like Russell Brand. Maybe they'll vote for me that way. What a weird thing to say. I don't know. Maybe why not? <laughs> uh, so the top four in that one like got to move on to the next game. And anyone who got was below that had to do a loser's tournament where the game, instead of being played with an Xbox 360 controller, was played with a DDR pad. Okay. So they had a DDR pad duel on stage. And, um, and we got eight players out of that. So the eight of us ended up playing a game called Move or Die. Yeah. All right. This is uh, it, a game that basically controls like Super Meat Boy, but it's like all these different themed rounds, and they had Twitch integration implemented, so people in the chat could That's, basically twist yeah. what happened in certain rounds. That's cool. Okay, but it's like a platformer. 
Yeah. So okay. it was like four people in a mo- in a room. If you were not moving, your health meter would slowly drain, and once your health meter drains, you die, and that's whatever ranking you get in that match. Oh, I think I have actually seen some of this. Yeah. But only a little bit. Okay. Uh, so we did that, and uh, like that was pretty good. Like they had two groups of four go up, and then the top two from each round went up. I got second in that round, so I moved on. So there were four of us left. We made it to the second day, and then those were the four that were guaranteed to make it to TwitchCon. Okay. Uh, on the second day, we started by being put into two teams of two, and we played uh, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. With uh, with the VR? No. Oh. Uh, one person had a computer in front of them. The other person was behind them, or was behind the computer with the manual. Okay, so printed off manual. Yeah. Okay. That's it's kind a of a bummer that they didn't get a they didn't get the headset involved, but oh well. Yeah. So um, I got paired up with a dude called Future Man Gaming, a uh, super chill dude, and we D Oshi and the other guy whose name I think is like Tangent Gaming, I believe is the other guy. They went up first because we won a coin toss. And uh, one of them had not played before. Mm. So they had 20 minutes to defuse as many bombs and modules as possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, He got... In their first round, they didn't get a single bomb. They got like four modules. And in their second round, they got one bomb and like another three modules. So their score was like one in six or something like that. One in seven. We came up and in our first 10 minutes, we almost beat them. We had one bomb and six modules. We ran out of time on the last module. Hmm. So then we switched over to uh, our second 10 minutes, and then we cleared it in, like, 30 seconds. So it was me and Future Man in the finals. Mm -hmm. But Future Man was the previous champion at TwitchCon, so he wasn't actually allowed to compete. He was a stand-in for someone else who didn't show up. So they called, uh, he called a stand-in to take his spot and compete in the actual finals. Yeah. And that was a dude called Ezekiel III. And he came up, uh, and then we were told what our game was going to be, and it was speed Lego building. Yeah, I did watch that part. You better believe I watched that. <laughs> oh, man. I haven't heard of any of this. Okay, Hank, just for like, lame, just you know, is this actual Lego? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. they, before before they went live for the finals, uh, DJ Wheat messaged me. He's like, "Hey, dude, uh, light side or dark side?" I'm like, "What? Uh, light side?" So he's like, "Okay." And they announce it, and then they he opens up an Amazon box, pulls out an X-Wing and a TIE Fighter Lego kit, throws them at us, and they're like, go, just build. <laughs> so the final okay. is just right. us building an X-Wing and a TIE Fighter, it was and close, I man. lost. I lost, unfortunately. A lot of people were saying mine was more complex. I don't know if that was actually the case. How, I've actually built they... your model before, and it sucked. <laughs> is it just... Oh. It. Is it just like they just eyeballed it and they're like, this one looks like there's more pieces on it? Or how did they determine this? Like no, pieces I think they, left? Uh, no, well, you, you literally had to finish it. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought it was like you have 20 minutes, so you long, you could do it. Okay. No, uh, so I, uh, he beat me to it. And then as I panicked to like get up there in case he screwed up, I put one of the wings on backwards. Dude. Gotcha. Yeah. That plane's so- just going to fly in circles. <laughs> Uh, th- <laughs> you're right that was my main concern at the time <laughs> but yeah that was uh, that was it so unfortunately I lost the trophy there because there's a trophy if you won the tournament there but we still made it to uh, TwitchCon so that'll be in late September I believe Yep. how nerve wracking is it to build Lego under a timer with people watching <laughs> It's very weird, especially for someone who hasn't properly built a Lego kit in a while. The last Lego kit I did was one of those, like, the the General Grievous, like, character one that I got for Reese for her for Christmas. Mm-hmm. But okay, other so than that, like, that a, no, like, a normal Lego kit, though, has been ages, like, years. Okay. Because mm-hmm. that General Grievous kit was basically, like, building a Kinex. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Lego's cool. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it was all right. I just didn't expect it. Did you yeah. get to keep the Lego set? Yeah, I have it as kind of a stark reminder. Cool. Did you finish it properly then now? Yeah, I finished it uh, on the stage. Okay. No, I literally sh- just had to pull I had to pull the wing off and put it back on. That's you all I had just to do. left it as a memento. <laughs> you just no. like thrown it at the table and just watched it explode. Actually, it you should have. That would have made walked sense. walked out of there. <laughs> no, better right. You start walking up the stage and like throw it behind you and it explodes in the background. 
So Zeke got the gold salt can. Yeah. Well, apparently Zeke actually made it to the finals at TwitchCon. He was in the top eight, but he got eliminated. Uh, Future Man brought him back because apparently Zeke brought him back during one of the tournaments, and then Future Man went on to win it, so it was kind of a more of a favor. Gotcha. So we'll see. Zeke seemed like a good guy, but he, like, he has this persona of just being an ass. So like the first thing he did was like well, walk towards loud. him with his hand out. Yeah, yeah, he's very loud, too. Yeah. Just calling him out. No, that's his. <laughs> that's literally his career is to be super loud and angry. Yeah. So I gotta try to get revenge on him at TwitchCon. Yeah. And they're doing another round at PAX Prime, so I don't think I'm allowed to compete in that. But right, there'll be another four people moving on to TwitchCon from there. I heard a rumor that PAX Prime might be getting renamed to PAX West. Yeah, it's that makes sense. That PAX makes a West lot now. more sense. Well, East is PAX bigger. East, yeah, East is bigger. That's what that was the thing I was a little surprised to hear. Wait, wait, what? Yeah, I heard East, East has thing. like more people in the state. The building is bigger and stuff now. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, because that building is gigantic. Although I still heard that th that PAX East was insanely packed. Yeah, yeah, I kept getting knocked around everywhere trying to get anywhere on the show floor. Um, did you play any games at PAX East? No. <laughs> okay. You should know better. Uh, uh, yeah, because I had the Sultan, which took me until like an hour before the floor closed so we went and got food then i had it the next day which so i did the same thing then i had to get ready for our panel which was saturday night is this and then this food you got is that worth talking about like i'm curious i mean you got some it's a hot dog i got like a caesar salad with some chicken croutons were soft it was weird okay how'd the panel go panel went went pretty good um <laughs> there were some issues with it but not like tech issues if that makes sense Oh, okay. um, just like just like know, personalities, like you don't like, like some of your friends. Issues. Uh, we had twenty contestants come up, and only two got points. Oh wow! Oh, so just you're just saying boss is just kind of dumb. The problem oh, is shit. like, oh wow, wow. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I don't know. It sounds uh, like you're saying that. Paul, does it but, sound like he's saying that? I'm not getting in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I don't know. It was. Uh, a lot of people asked the people like, "Did I make it too hard?" And a lot of people were like, "No." A lot of those that were super easy, they didn't get. So just keep it at the difficulty you already have it. So sounds like you're just saying they're dumb. No, I'm not saying they're dumb. <laughs> I just had a lot of people that they, they okay, well, like. I want to hear some like, of these questions. For example, one of the questions was like, "Name what game these Final Fantasy characters are from?" And the guy straight up said, "I've never played a Final Fantasy game in my life." What? Okay. Yeah. What? What? What were the characters? Uh, Irvine. This is definitely one of the ones I have not played then. <laughs> six. No. I would have assumed. It's, it's got to be six, seven, eight, or nine then. Eight. It's eight, yeah. Okay. Yo, if, if you said six, seven, eight, or nine, that's already half of them. <laughs> yeah. So. I that's would not like, true. pick that's one like, of them. That's like, a, that's like a quarter of them. Yeah, okay, you're right, actually. It is. What are some of these other questions? I want to I I hear them. Do you want me to say the rest of the Final Fantasy characters? Or? Well, no I, no, I know the answer now, so. Of one of them, there were five. It was. Uh, I have a category where you had. To get oh, five I see. Correct. You gave one character per game. Yeah, no, okay, I sure. gave. I gave five games. I gave five characters, and they had to guess the games, and you oh, had to okay. get three of them right. Okay, sure. So you already got one wrong. Uh, Kamari. I've not played this one. Maybe I'm super dumb. You Maybe that's the twist. <laughs> Kam who's Kamari? The blue cat. The blue cat. He's like this third character that joins your party. I don't think that was in my teammate. Do you mean Waka? No. <laughs> I think you mean Waka. No, I mean the blue cat. Let's ball champ Waka. Waka. <laughs> uh, God, who was the third one? Uh, Red 13. Okay, seven. Yeah. yeah. Boom. Got, champ, guy, guess, guess. what you got on me, Boston? Do they really not know Red 13? They guessed 13. It's like, it's Cloud? Then it's Red 13, right? No, it's Cloud, then it's Tifa, then it's... Aries, then it's I don't know, man. Red, Red, 13, Red 13 a bit late. <laughs> Red 13 is like the only character that like people probably know less than Red 13 is like Vincent, and that's because you had his whole game for yeah, himself. Vincent had his own game though. Yeah, but you could miss him. That's the thing. Oh, yes. you can oh, miss lots of those characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can only miss two of them. You couldn't you miss a uh, Yuff Yuffie? Yuffie? Yeah. yeah, that's the other one. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, I missed uh, Yuffie. Yuffie. Uh, I haven't played that game in so long. Uh, Ball Fear? No, that's familiar, but no, I don't think so. I'm going to guess 12. 
Good guess. Yeah, that's a good Whoa, guess. Whoa, boom. And the last one was Guy. Oh, that's really familiar, too. I'm going to guess it's one of the early, earlier ones. Is it under six? Like, one through five? Is it in there? And then I'll guess again. Yeah, it's in that range. Okay, so I have played it. That's why it's familiar. I'm going to say... I'm going to say... Oh, I'm going to say it's three or four. Two. Oh, two. Okay. And here's the thing. You had 30 seconds to do all that as well, so... Okay. Yeah. But yeah, yeah no, that was, like, the kind of questions we had. Um, we had some... I felt bad for one guy, because... Uh, uh, we have this category called Who the Heck is That? And where it shows a silhouette of a character and a description of them. Okay, and that sounds hard. It was... Hey, well, maybe the description better. You know what, do you want me to read out the description? I just want to yeah, read this yeah. out and see. I know Paul will get this. I'd be shocked oh. if Paul did this, but I'm curious to see how you do it. I'm, doing I'm this, totally Sean. not going to get it now. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure. No, I know, me, I was all confident. This, I screwed this. If you I'm don't get I'm this, I'm crumbling like a throne stunned. controllers contestant right now. <laughs> Art. Art. <laughs> Ow, should I actually have to load up the game because I wrote it in the game itself? Hang on a sec. Oh, wait. Some people in the chat are giving answers. <laughs> Stop giving answers to these. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't read chat then. Yeah, maybe clo maybe yeah. minimize chat. Oh, they're even doing even more than well, yeah, minimizing I'm trying chat. to order a pizza here, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super stoked. <laughs> All right, so he here's the description. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a wonder her first game created a, a successful horror series based on how bad the live action segments and voice acting were. Yeah, I know what it at, is. At least she's got a type of sandwich named after her, though. So, Sean, do you know who this is? I mean, if it's no, but if it's if it's about Paul, I'm gonna say it's either Silent Hill or Resident Evil. Well, you got the series <laughs> right. Did I get it right? One of the two. You have to give me the character, though. Jill. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only. Okay. So, so Paul, you'll be, you might be a little surprised with this. They guessed Rebecca. I have no idea who that is. The silhouette's completely different, though. That's what game is Jill from? They're both from the same they're, game. They're, they're both from, from the Evil. same game. Okay, Resident Evil. Well, I said Resident Evil or Silent Hill, so I didn't know which one. Okay. Those people just look like people. I would not have gotten not the silhouette for sure yeah the silhouette wasn't much of a help it was really the description oh okay so you didn't have like a master like a master chief looking dude or like uh i had Pokemon? from tekken so you could see like the hair okay um, that's a bit better i had explosion man i'm trying to think of what else was even on there we had five of them come up at least some of them were like super obvious some weren't i want to hear a couple other of these descriptions i want to try <laughs> right. oh my god yeah, all right just... we're just playing throw controllers this yeah is just throw controllers podcast now Holy All right, shit. Give me Don't a pick like the hardest ones. I'm just gonna read out the ones that we used because okay. they're probably gonna sure. get scrapped anyways. All right, yeah. cool. you, once they're once they're used, they're gone. Let's do this. Uh, the next one. Okay, he's the textbook definition of a joke character, but he's got a pretty strong following. Not bad for a character who was a cheap shot at another company's fighting game series. This yeah. works for me because I get to listen to the music I used on this category, and I really like it. Uh, no, Paprius. What? Do you mean Papyrus? Papyrus. And no? Okay, I don't know. The chat was shouting pa pa Papyrus, <laughs> and he was a joke dude. <laughs> They're chanting his name. <laughs> Paul, do you have any idea? Read it again. Uh, he's the textbook definition of joke character, but he's got a pretty strong following. Not bad for a character who was a cheap shot at another company's fighting game series. Another company's fighting game series. I have no idea. Series. I feel like... I should, probably should know. No, I can't think you, of it. You would know the character. It was Dan from Street Fighter. No. Nope. Okay. I don't play a whole lot of fighting games, so. Fair enough. Uh, next one. All right. This one was a hard one, and I think the silhouette would give it away for you, Sean, because you've definitely played this game. Okay. Oh. Uh, if science went horribly wrong and created this explosive character, then why does he know so many Arnold Schwarzenegger quotes? Seems just fine to me. Oh, wait, so it's Explosion Man? Yeah. yeah, yeah okay, because, yeah, you mentioned Explosion Man a yeah. minute ago. Yeah. Okay. That was super obvious. But I don't like, think I, it, I don't know if I would have gotten that. Uh, that would have been the hardest one. Like, it was very clearly Explosion Man. You could even see the fuse on his head. So okay. it was very obvious. This was one that I felt bad for the person who guessed it because they figured it out after I started describing a little bit more, but it was, like, too late. Okay. Uh, a brilliant engineer, but a terrible pilot. You should. You probably spent most of your game time letting him get shot at until you realized he was the character that made the boss's health meter appear. That'll teach you. Launchpad McQuack. Really? I have engineer? No idea. <laughs> hey, that guy is a, that guy. You, he could be an engineer. 
he's a crime fighter and a pilot, you know. You're right. I guess he could be an yeah, engineer. He probably builds his own planes. <laughs> that you know that would explain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they'd guess on Pat McQuack. What did they guess? I don't think they had a guess at all. Oh. And okay. then I said it. I uh, I asked them this like after they'd given up. I'm like, uh, have you? Do you play Nintendo games? Do you have a Wii U? Did you hear about the game that came out yesterday? And then they realized it was Slippy Toad from Star Fox. Oh, okay. People were saying Slippy Toad in the chat as well. All right. Yeah. Um, do you want me to do any more? Let's do one more, and then and then we'll continue on with the. I think. The, yeah, I already told you who this one was. So okay, don't do it then. All right, but this was. I'll give you the description. Okay. Uh, the actual king of the Iron Fist. He's run and won the most tournaments out of any character in his series, and somehow managed to make himself younger because of plot reasons. Not bad for a character that. But this spaghetti obsessed skeleton thinks his voice is royal guard material. Now, if only he could capture a filthy human. <laughs> That's an easy one, right? That was one that a contestant did not get, but and like, the audience was very upset. Do you but yes, that was, that was easy? an easy one. Yeah, okay. That would be an easy one. Is that one Papyrus? That is Papyrus, Papyrus yeah. Okay, yeah. That's an easy one, right? That was one that a contestant did not get, but and like, the audience was very upset. Do you but yes, that was, that easy? was an easy one. Yeah, okay. That would be an easy one. Is that one Papyrus? That is Papyrus? Papyrus, yeah. Okay, yeah. The skeleton and the nye tipped me off. Yeah, exactly. I have to write it so that if you can't use the silhouette as a hint, the the writing gives you hints if you know the game. Yeah. Right. Okay, that's cool. Any other uh, PAX East shenanigans to note? Eh, not really. No, that was that was mainly it. It was the, the Salton tournament, uh, the panel, and just kind of relaxing on the last day. Did you do anything in Boston? Um, no, not really. We actually went early to visit Reese's family. So we right. went there and then we took the train to Boston. Oh, okay. Okay. So they're, they're outside of Boston then? Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, Flat Matt brought up a good point from the panel. We had, uh, did you guys know the song from Lavender Town in the original Pokemon? <sighs> like the, the, like if the, I heard the, it, I probably would recognize it. The spooky it. sounding music? Like the doo yeah. doo yeah, yeah. Doo Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we had a contestant come up that guessed it was from The Legend of Zelda, and then when the audience booed, I'm like, uh, you get a second chance. She guessed it was from Samus. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I felt oh, bad. Man. Samus. And yeah. that was right after the papyrus question, too, so like the audience was like, how are they not getting these? Yeah, well, no. Oh. Poor, poor girl. Yeah. But no, that was my PAX East, basically, in a nutshell. Then I had Comic-Con this weekend, and next week I'm in Edmonton for Game Developers Expo. Yeah. What is Game Developers Expo? Is that it's new? A, it's a, yeah, it's fairly new. I think it's their second year for it. It's a small uh, convention that uh, a bunch of local developers in Edmonton are running. They invited anyone from Alberta up, so I'm there to speak about uh, streaming in like a Q&A session. Cool. Cool, cool. That'll be fun. Yeah. And then like two weeks after that, I'm at Momocon. So. Where's Momocon? That's in Atlanta. All right. Okay, but you do have some games on your list. Yes. Um, so I will admit there's one game I bought because of uh, what I watched at, uh, at PAX East, but I didn't actually play it there, and that was 20XX. <clears throat> yeah. So that game looks really cool. It is cool. Uh, Sean, I don't know if you know about this. This is a oh, uh, like Mega Man. roguelike Mega Man X game. All that right. It is co-op as well. Yeah, it looks super awesome. Uh, one character can play as X, the other plays as Zero. Or their equivalents. Their ripoffs, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. You haven't tried it yet, though? No, not yet. Um, we got home, and then we uh, had one day to get ready for our uh, friend to come down, because we were, they were coming down for Comic Expo. They're still here, actually. They're upstairs hanging out with Reese. Okay. So, uh... So, is it good? I saw, I saw you bought it on Steam. Yeah, it looked good. I Like I said, I haven't sat down and played it yet, oh, okay. so that's, that's hopefully going to be in the next day or two. Uh, I also have Star Fox Zero sitting on my coffee table. That's going to be played probably tonight, actually, because I think heard, a bunch of us want to play it. haven't really heard good things about it. Me neither. That's what bums me out! <coughs> but it's also exactly what I called from E3 last year. I've yeah. heard um, Star Fox Guard. Is that the full name? Yeah. I heard that's good. I heard that's good, but I've also heard it's really short. Yeah. 
which is not the worst, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed out. Oh, well. When was the last... To be fair, there hasn't really been that good of a Star Fox game in a long time. Maybe Star Fox is like... Maybe it's like Sonic. It is just like, we just don't need it anymore. Maybe, I don't know. I think the real thing that held back Star Fox Zero is the stupid control scheme. Everyone has been complaining about the control scheme. Right, right. Because it's forced motion control. You, you can't... You can, like, limit it, but you can't completely turn it off. Well, I guess you'll find out tonight. We'll wait yeah, to... Yeah, I've, heard the, hear I've heard the actual best way to play that game is co-op. Because okay. one person can pilot the ship and the other person can aim. Which gets rid of that aiming, gets rid of that whole problem. Right. But there's no multiplayer, like, versus multiplayer, which is weird. That is weird. Even, like, uh, Assault had that. Yeah, I think actually... every Star Fox except for the first one had multiplayer like that. Did Adventure? Y you know, I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I played a lot of uh, multiplayer Assault with my friends, though. We had fun with that. <clears throat> yeah, Salt was pretty good. Um, other than that, the games I actually played, since we got pretty off track. Uh, where's the list? I did not open it. Cool. Uh, I played a bunch of 3DS stuff, starting with Pocket Card Jockey. This is the new this. game coming from the Pokemon company, Game Freak. Mm -hmm. Right, yes, I do remember hearing about this. This is a horse racing slash solitaire game. Okay, and yours, I think this is the demo you said? Yeah, because okay. the official game is not out till Thursday. Okay. It, should I be excited? Do you like Solitaire? I mean, it's all right. It's okay. Do you like easier Solitaire? Yeah, except on a time limit. <laughs> okay, so is it like not very good? No, I actually really enjoyed it. It's okay. actually kind of cool, but it's hard. So the way it works is that um, it's like a, it's a mobile game I've seen that also plays the same way. You don't have to like match up the four different types, the four suits. Okay, you up in the top, you, yeah. Yeah, you straight up, and you have a pile of cards, and you have to clear them. And uh, you pick your starting card, and then you either pick a number higher or lower than it by one. So like, if you picked four, you'd have to pick either a three or a five. Okay. And then whatever card you pick would have to be the same again. It doesn't matter what suit it is. So if you picked three, you'd have, you'd have a chance you could use another four, or you could use a two. And so on and so on. And then you have to do that to get rid of all the cards. And you have a limited amount of cards you can pull from in case you run out of moves. Okay. So you do this, and the better you do at that, and the faster you do it, and the more cards you clear, the uh, more energy your horse has during the horse race. Okay. And then you can position him accordingly. He'll build up more energy. You can get, like, experience points for him and stuff like that. Wait, is, are the horses running while you're playing? Yes. Okay. The, the whole point is you're doing the uh, the solitaire to actually like control your horse. So it's kind of like, did you guys ever play Ten Million? Yeah. I uh, yes, I have actually. It's kind of like that where you're doing like a, some kind of game below, and then on top is the the game that you're like interacting with a bit, like you're kind of. But I found Ten Million to be a lot stricter. Like there's just a time limit on the bottom, and like like you'll be like, all right, you're on the first turn, so here's the first part of the race. Do your solitaire under this time limit. And then so on and so on. Like in, in 10 million, like there's something slowly catching up to you straight up. But like the timer resets each time you get to a new portion in this. Okay. But it's still kind of that, like, like, a, like it's a kind of two things going on, whereas one is influencing the other. It's pretty, yeah. Pretty like the directly. Solitaire game is influencing the race. And then once yeah. you've done that, you go back to moving around the horse a bit. Okay. Okay. I think I understand energy. it then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only time you actually like move your horse is when you're in between solitaire games to like position them according to everyone else or to get items and then at the final turn where you actually can like hit them to make them go faster or make them move up and down to dodge other horses okay uh it's it's a silly little like game i'm not sure how much it's gonna be when it comes out but i was enjoying it and the demo save file transfers over so that's always cool that's where yeah. that happens how much so, would you pay for that when it comes out probably like eight bucks Eight bucks. All right. Eight, eight, ten dollar range, maybe. I prefer okay. to be lower, but I think that's probably what they're going to charge. It's around ten bucks. Okay. Cool. Uh, I also played Witch and Hero Two. <clears throat> this is a sequel to Witch and Hero One, which was a game where um, you run into enemies until you die, and then yeah. uh, you get resurrected and keep doing that until you've killed all the enemies on the screen. This is also 3DS. Are all of these that you're going to talk about you, 3DS? Uh, pretty much all of them. Yeah. Okay. 3DS. So, um, the difference in Witch and Hero 2 is that you can actually move the witch, which was a, which was a different thing, which I liked. Are these all download games? Yeah, these are all download games. All right. 
I have no idea what this is. I didn't play the first one. Um, yeah, no, it, it's fun. It's like I think it was like three bucks when I got it. The first one I got for a dollar, and I really enjoyed it. And so the second one, I'm like, all right, that's no brainer. I'll get it. Uh, it's definitely harder because the idea was that it was kind of a tower defense in the first one, where you had to like protect the witch who was frozen in the middle of the stage. Now the witch can just move around. So now you have to control two characters at the same time with like the A, B, X, Y buttons and the D-pad. So it's just it's more like remember the control scheme in Brothers. Imagine doing that while playing Tower Defense. Weird. That okay. sounds kind of awful. It's it's weird, but it's kind of fun actually. I like okay. it. Okay. All right. And like three, uh, three bucks is totally like nothing. So yeah, exactly. Uh, I also played Mutant Muds Super Challenge. Okay. Which is just a very very hard version of Mutant Muds. Same I was actually game, surprised. Like levels I was and actually everything? no, all new levels. Okay, but I was surprised at how much harder they were. Like I died in the intro stage. Oh wow! <laughs> and I don't think I died in Mutant Muds till about halfway through the game. All right. Uh, the game starts your save file with a death counter that can go up to I think a million. <laughs> so they clearly expect you to die a couple times, and right. it's also a, it's also a cross buy game, so it works on Wii U and 3DS. Cool. Nice. That's great. Yeah. Uh, other than that, uh, we played a very dumb game that uh, my girlfriend covered on her channel the other day. It's called There's Poop in My Soup. Great. This is 3DS again? <laughs> this is Steam. This is on okay. Steam. All right. It's a very weird game where you literally are throwing poop at things such as soup and other people, and you're just trying to get the highest score possible while pooping on people. Yeah. Wait, it's are also you throwing poop or yeah. pooping on you're, them? You're throwing poop. Okay. Poop, you... poop comes out of your mouth and lands on oh. people below you. What? Okay. What is this like a shooter? Like, what do you mean? What am I, what, what am I looking at when I'm seeing this? Uh, it's like, God, I don't know. Like, you aim, you move a cursor around. Like, you're you're on like a balcony and you're aiming down at the street below. Okay. But it's like a a panned out view, so you see yourself moving back and forth on like the balcony. And okay. you just kind of poop at, like, people walking on the street. You'll get, like, uh, there's, like, a Tony Hawk, like, to-do list, or as I call it, the two-poop list, where it's, like, uh, get a combo where you poop on a mom and then poop on the baby. Get, get poop, on, poop in the soup three times in a row. Um, bounce a poop off a balcony into a taxi. Weird stuff like that. Okay. And then there's, like, these weird power-ups you get. Like, you, dr you have a poop bomb. You get, like, a diarrhea where you just poop everywhere. Yes. It's... It's a weird game. We only ended up playing it because um, we had some friends over last night and Reese was editing her video of it and no, she said she hadn't gotten the power-ups and everyone was like, you need to see the power-ups. So we brought my computer into the living room and we just played it. Okay. Is it, it, very is, weird is game. it good? It, it was fun, but there was only three stages and we finished them pretty fast. So All right. I Sounds think, gross. I think my Steam sale I only played for 20 minutes and I've already got like uh, 18 out of 22 achievements. Okay. Yeah, 23 minutes. It was a fun little silly thing. I don't know how much it was because I just played Reese's Coffee. Okay. And I also played some Smash Bros. and that was about it. Paul? <clears throat> Mine's going to be kind of easy this week. I played Shellshock Live with one of my buddies for a bit and started liking that game. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have something in my throat here. I should have got some water. Uh, so Shellshock Live... It's like, oh, I'm trying to remember the name of the game, but do you remember back on old computers and, like, the Atari and stuff, there'd be, like, the games where you would, like, have a like tank Pong? or a gun or something, and then you would shoot and it would arc and you would have to hit, like, other tanks and guns and bases and shit like that? Sure. Yeah, it's that, basically. Worms. No, it's not worms. <laughs> it's nothing like worms. So... <clears throat> It's brightly colored, cheap version of that that you play with a bunch of other people. You can go one on one, two v two, three uh, three v three, or like just a free for all where six people are shooting different weapons at each other and stuff like that. It's pretty fun, pretty basic, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I just started getting into that pretty heavily within the last day here. It's a good like passive game that you could like watch a YouTube video or a stream or listen to a podcast while playing because you kind of like get your angle and power set or whatever then you just lock in your selection and then have to wait for people to lock in their selections as well and then it all just kind of plays out so there's a lot of downtime where you don't even have to look at the game really so that's been fun 
I recommend pocket. Wait, what? Blue Choker says, "What about pocket tanks?" I don't know what pocket tanks is. So, sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> um, I'd recommend it. It's cheap. Like, it's six bucks Canadian. Like, it's fucking nothing to buy right now. You can get a four pack. I think it's twenty something bucks. So, yeah. Little game there. I've been playing the Paragon beta a little bit. This is Epic Games' MOBA that plays a lot like Smite with a lot more graphics, basically. I hear you've been liking it. No, it's good, but it's, like, just good. Like, it's not great or anything, so I don't really care about it, honestly. It looks fantastic, though. Like, that engine is going to be super dope when people start using that more. The new engine from Unreal. Right, 5? Yeah, yeah. It's so nice. God damn, man. <laughs> it's pretty well optimized, too. Uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about it because I don't personally care that much about it. It plays like Smite that looks better, and that's exactly what that game is. So if you just if you like Smite, you'll probably like Paragon, and you should probably look into it. Um, other than that, just more Dark Souls. Been wrapping up some more annoying areas with uh, one of my buddies, Wolf and Tenmar, that John knows, obviously, and other people in the community know. So we've been doing that co-op. We finally got past the first part that's like PvP Central where people consistently invade you when you're trying to do anything. And yeah, the last thing we played was super annoying in that regard. But that continues on. Uh, that's all I have to talk about. <clears throat> all right. Um, let's jump into the news then. Some stuff happened. Uh Real quick thing uh, that I was interested in. There's a new uh, Nintendo Humble Bundle. And these are always real cool when you get a bunch of uh, like 3DS and Wii U games from Humble. So if people are into that, you can get that. I was really only interested in uh, Rhythm Thief. Um, and then for like $3 more, I just could get everything. So I was like, okay, why not? So I did that. Um, <clears throat> uh, there's also a real super easy website where you can redeem all the codes and have them just download immediately, which is ec.nintendo.com slash redeem. Yeah, I, I noticed they implemented that recently. That happened with the uh, Mutant Muds. I was able to just queue it up. Yeah, that was. I just punched all the codes in, and then they immediately popped up on my 3DS. No waiting. It was, it was really helpful. Uh, so if people are interested in that Humble Bundle, I highly recommend check using uh, that website as well. I'm curious what the more games to come are. Uh, so, One weird thing is one of the games, Citizens of Earth, you get it. You have to pick if you want it for the Wii U or the 3DS, as opposed to like both, like a bunch of the other ones are, or have been. So I, I, I just picked, I think I picked Wii U. I don't know why. The, the, the Metacritic Maybe was like the same. Maybe you thought you were going to play it more? And maybe I thought it, I think I thought it would look better. It might be better. I don't know. But if it's just, the game I'm thinking of, the one, the Atlas one, where you play as like a, a president or a presidential candidate, uh, I think they look about the same. Yeah, uh, it looks. Yeah, you've been elected as the vice president of the world. Uh, yes, Atlas. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, okay. Okay. Much much bigger news happening this week is we there was a Nintendo earnings call, and. Uh, the NX is coming out March seventeenth. March seven, and by seventeenth I mean twenty seventeen, mm -hmm. not the seventeenth of March. March twenty seventeen. Um, Zelda, the new Zelda is going to be a launch title for that system, and it's coming to the Wii U. So it's just the Wii and the GameCube again, basically. Yeah. Um, so Zelda has been delayed once again. Uh, this E3, no NX edit. In fact, nothing Nintendo except the new Zelda, I guess on Wii U. Uh, uh, that's going to be the only playable thing at their booth, yeah. I thought that was going to be the only thing at their booth. Uh, the Wii U version of the game will be playable for the first time on the E3 show floor, and it'll be the only playable game Nintendo presents at the show in order to provide attendees complete immersion. Okay, I guess they'll have some TVs. With, that, uh, that would not be the first time. They did that with Xenoblade Chronicles <coughs> X and Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire last year. What, just had like trailers running? Yeah. yeah. They were, just, they were just TVs that were like, here's a dedicated trailer TV for Pokemon. Pose in front of this picture of a Pokemon. 
Great. Go on Great. your way. That's weird. I don't know. Like, they have more Pokemon games coming out. I don't know why they aren't bringing more games. They have a, they ha- a they Paper, have Mario, Paper game. Mario Yeah. Yeah. Like, Is that so, coming out in May? <clears throat> I think that's actually supposed to be coming out in May, isn't it? Actually, so I want, here's another thing I wanted to discuss is that there's a very slow year for Nintendo fans now. Uh, I'll run through the list of games still to come out from Nintendo uh, in, in the United States. So we're looking at... So Pokemon Rumble World just came out. So we have Disney Art Academy. Mm-hmm. We have a new Kirby game, Planet... Robobot. Robobot. That Metroid Prime Federation Force. Uh, Dragon Quest 7 and 8 are supposed to be sometime this year. Mm-hmm. We have Pokemon Sun and Moon. Star Fox just came out. Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Fire Emblem. Fire... That's also soon. Yeah, that's uh, in June. Mario and Sonic at the Rio Olympic Games. And then Paper Mario sometime this year. That's it. So if you're yeah. looking for Nintendo games to play this fall, Dragon Quest 7 and 8 might be there. Pokemon will be there. And Paper Mario should be there. That's it. That's all they got for the rest of the year, basically. After the after June. Not a lot. Oh, I guess Metroid in, in August, which people seem to uh, really yeah, I'm wondering like. For. I'm wondering what their direct's going to be this year. Is it just going to be Zelda related, or are they going to actually reveal the NX in their in their direct, or what? Because they also mentioned no that there's going to be a special event later on where they introduce details on the NX. I mean, they also have a um, Tokyo Game Show. They can do more stuff there as well. Mm. Uh, definitely um, odd. I mean, I don't really care if it's coming out this year or next year. Apparently, they were talking that. Um, one of the reasons they d- they made the system coming out in uh, kind of the spring as opposed to the fall holiday season is there just wouldn't be any games ready for it. So Which, that de- thank, thank God. That makes sense. I don't need a system that doesn't have any games. That's for that sure. Was, that was the 3DS and the Wii U. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Um, oh, I don't know. The Wii U had games, but they were all ports of like, older games. Yeah, half of them were ports, and then there was like one or two interesting games. Yeah, you could play a uh, Metroid. No, not Metroid. Sorry, Mass Effect Three. Yeah, <laughs> Black without having played one or two. Yeah. Um, on a on a little bit of a actually much a much better note is Nintendo announced the next kind of two uh, mobile apps they're doing, and they are going to be Animal Crossing and Fire Emblem games. And they've said they aren't going to be much like Mitomo. They're going to be much more like actual game focused. And I, I was thinking, I think Fire Emblem and Animal Crossing might be two of my favorite Nintendo series. So I'm very excited. And those yeah, are I'm, both I'm curious how those going to be. I'm curious if they're going to be like pay to win ish kind of games. I'd like, I guess Animal Crossing wouldn't be, but maybe Fire Emblem. I well, I could see there's definitely going to be microtransactions for like clothing or something, or pay, pay to revive your character in Fire Emblem. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, I'm super curious what those are going to be. Um, I don't know if I need to play Fire Emblem so soon right again, but I could play some Animal Crossing. It's been a while since I played Animal Crossing, and I hope it's not just like a companion app to whatever the latest one was. What was the latest uh, one? New Leaf? Happy Home. Happy Home? No, I meant like actual Animal Crossing. Oh yeah, New Leaf. Hopefully it's not Happy Home. Ho- hopefully it's not just <laughs> basically like a... But they've got to do something with those 400 Amiibo cards out there. That's true. Yeah, yeah, I guess they do. Um, although my phone doesn't have an NFC uh, reader in it, so I wouldn't be able to do much. True. Um, but f- I think Fire Emblem on mobile would be great, and kind of having Animal Crossing with like the daily routine aspect of it on my phone would be super useful. Uh, so I'm definitely excited about that. Um, going back to Zelda, though, a lot of people are thinking, is the NX going to be more of a home console than if the new Zelda's coming to it? I I am curious. A lot of people are thinking that the NX is going to be this weird hybrid where you can take the games with you. Right. I mean, we've been hearing a little bit about that before, but if the new Zelda's coming to it, it, it's got to be something similar to kind of like a Wii U, right? It can't be a completely different, like, mobile version. I wouldn't expect, right? Yeah, because they said this was going to be like an open-world Zelda game. So this is going to be like the, the core game for core gamers, so... I don't know. I'm. I'm. I'll probably end up getting it for the NX, right? I did the Wii version before, 
unless it's like actually broken or whatever, but it, I want to play something new on my new console. So I'll most likely end up getting Zelda for the NX. Yeah, I mean, I did the same thing with Twilight Princess, so I yeah. figured it'd be more or less the same. Okay, a uh, couple more smaller things. Where are we at? Oh, the next Call of Duty kind of leaked out there. Uh, someone was just opening their PlayStation store, and just one of the advertisements just said Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. So that's the one coming out. That makes it sound year. like an MMO. Yeah, it does. <laughs> a little bit, I guess. That could be kind of cool. I think this is a um, Infinity Ward game again. It is. Back to yeah. Infinity Ward. Um, so they they did what? Modern Warfare. They didn't do Advanced Warfare. That was Sledgehammer. They did. And ghosts. then we have. Did they do Ghosts? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I hear people really don't like ghosts. I never played it, but yeah. I, I hear yeah, that I don't too. Think, I, I don't know how people really perceived... What was the last one? Black Ops 3? Did that come out? The last was it Black one? Ops 3 or was it Advanced was it? Warfighter? Or, no, Advanced no, Warfighter was before Black that. Black Ops 3 was the last one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And people like that from what I heard, but they also it's said it was so more different. Halo-ish. Yeah, it, it's that's so not Halo-ish. even Call of Duty anymore. The last time I heard people were like super into Call of Duty was Advanced Warfare. People sure. got pretty into that one. Same but. reason. More going against what uh, Call of Duty was before and more into like Halo territory. But anyway, Infinite Warfare, I'm sure we'll hear lots more about that at E3. And uh, we have the games with gold for May, which I'm actually interested in. Uh, Defense Grid 2 and... Costume Quest 2, that's the one I'm mainly interested in. Costume Quest 2. I had a 2. feeling, yeah. Um, and then Grid 2, and the first Peggle. Weird, okay. Which, uh, that's, that. yeah, that one's kind of weird. But uh, I'm just excited to get Costume Quest 2. I never got around to playing that. I liked Costume Quest 1. Mm-hmm. And the PlayStation Plus games for May. As this article loads. Here we go. Tropical 5. Tabletop Racing World Tour, Bionic Commando Rearmed 2, mm-hmm. Local Roco Coco Reco, mm-hmm. which I don't what? know what this is. Those Local Roco games are adorable. I like them. No, I played the, the PSP one. This is a PS3 one. What is this game? Yeah, I'm curious now too. Local Roco Co- Coco Reco came out in 2007. Yeah, PlayStation 3, what is this? Is it, I, I think it's a downloadable game. It must have been like a downloadable... Weird. I've never, yeah. never heard of it. Yeah, yeah. well... This was one of the first games I got on my PS3. Weird. I definitely played those on um the PSP. I liked Local Roco. Local Roco was great. Yep. Switch Galaxy Ultra and God of War Ghost of Sparta, which I believe is the second... Uh, m- mobile. Yes. God of War Chains of Olympus was yeah. the first. One yeah, I played that yeah. one. I did not play Ghosts or Ghost of Sparta. And then so we got some info on the Walking Dead season three coming out this fall. Who's excited? Nope. Yeah, I mean not really. But guess what? <laughs> you know they got a twist on their head. Clementine's coming back again. Oh yay! Oh man! What? New characters. That's not a new character. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's. Um, the that's end. So that was like two things to take from this. Clementine's back again, and then one thing that's a little bit interesting is they're catching up with the comic books. So it's going to be like set four years later, and it's going to be tied into the comic books a lot more. Uh, I don't even know if I'm going to play this. I just I don't even know if I have it in me. All right, let's go on to questions. Where can people send questions? Top 10 Perspective at gmail.com, TDP Podcast on Twitter, Top 10 Perspective on Facebook, and my P.O. Box. You're not wrong. Was gonna, no, one, no one took it, so I was like, all right, fine. Okay, I'm going to read this first one. Okay. Jaren says, I went to a GameStop the other day and found this ridiculous game for 99 cents called Hunt for Blackbeard's Booty for the Wii. When checking out, the cashier gave me the strangest look and said, do you want to get a warranty on... Then he paused, then swallowed Hunt for Blackbeard's booty. I felt so stupid, so have you ever been embarrassed to buy a video game? No. He should have gotten that warranty, man. $3 warranty for his $1 game? That's just <laughs> that's just smart. That's just common sense. What happens if he scratches it? 
then he can t- <laughs> just buy two more for the price of the warranty. That's true. He could have. He just can make that. them fight to the death. I'm c- really curious what this game is. I'm gonna. I just I found it. Same. It's called Pirates Hunt for Blackbeard's Booty. It's it looks like it's a mini game collection actually. Wait, mini game collection on the Wii. I know. Actually, no, maybe yes. it's not. I don't know. I see someone firing a cannon. Oh, and then I see actual mini game. It's never mind. Features over it's twenty mini-game. fun-filled pirate activities. Yeah, this is a mini game collection. It's a mini game collection. Cool. Um, all right, embarrassing games that you've bought in before. Paul. Any game? Oh, Paul. Paul, this is your question. I'm not embarrassed by buying anything. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Just just owning it. If I'm spending money on it. Like if I was embarrassed, I wouldn't pay money for it because I don't care enough about it. I had a friend get me record of Augurist or Augurist Wars. Yes, I remember this. Okay. He got it for me for my birthday. Uh, the special edition because it came with a boob mouse. So I have that. I have an anime boob mouse somewhere at my bedroom at my mom's. Okay. Boob mouse pad. Yeah. Cool. What about you guys? Yeah, any game that's just like very clearly just boobs. It's just like uh huh, like if it's in like a retail setting. I don't think I've ever bought in like a super embarrassing game in a retail. Rumble setting. Roses is probably the most embarrassing one I bought. Rumble Roses, man. Yeah, I have. Right. I do have a copy yeah. of Dead or Alive Extreme Two. I don't know how I got that. I must have bought it, but I don't even remember buying it. <laughs> I, I actually do so. remember you buying it because that was when we were working together. Oh, was it? Was it I think I think you said you no. You, I think you said you were gonna buy it for the achievements at first. Then you looked it up and how hard the achievements were. Right. No, it actually was for the achievements because it was pre-patched. I think you were gonna do it. No, I don't think. Oh I no, the achievements. I think you know what it probably was. It was probably like super cheap. Um, and I was like, sure, like why not? I'll see what this is about. Uh, but if I was just buying it from like you or Nathan, like I wouldn't have been embarrassed because like whatever. Right. Um, but okay, yeah, I didn't remember how I came into owning that. Yeah, and it was Nathan- definitely when we worked together. All right, Nathan and I played uh, that a bit together, and that was weird. <laughs> Nathan <laughs> bought that. Um, yeah. Lecture's edition of Catherine that came with a body yep. pillow. Every time. Every time. <laughs> and we always just. Comes up. <laughs> yeah, we always just made fun of him for it. Like always, all the time. And then, oh, he didn't. He also we had a whole bunch of like Bayonetta when Be- when Be- posters yeah, and calendars. When Bayonetta came out. Yeah, they came out with a calendar of just yep. Bayonetta. Yep. And, no, it was like six posters or something like that in yeah. a tube. Yeah. And like Nathan took yeah. them, and I remember we made fun of him for that too. Yeah. But okay, all right, there you go. My conscience is clear. You did it. Proud of you. All right, uh, Andy writes in and says, "Just finished Bravely Second 100% a few hours ago, and what an amazing game it was, in my opinion. The grind wasn't as heavy as Bravely Default was. That's good. The pacing is pretty nice throughout the game, though a bit of a slow start, like most conventional RPGs. That's what I was afraid of. And the music is even more intense than its predecessor, making it one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard. Though many seem to prefer the first game soundtrack instead. Uh, so far, I am in that camp. I think you like game. the first one more." Yeah, but like I like I'm only playing the demo. I'm playing the Cavalier demo because apparently that also ties into the actual game. Oh yeah, maybe I should like play that this weekend before I start. Okay. I've heard, someone said it was ten hours long. I don't know if that's actually the case. What? Okay, I'm looking this up. I don't know. Yeah, look it up. I don't know who the hell said it was ten hours long, but uh, for those that did play Bravely Default, you will be giving will you be giving Bravely Second a shot? Also, memorable RPG soundtracks you still listen to to this day. Oh man, it is ten hours. I'm just I've seen three different articles that say demo for Bravely Second is ten hours long. Okay, so never mind. Oh, that was actually correct. What have I gotten myself into? <laughs> Holy smokes! Oh, the demo is only that long if you hundred percent it. Okay. Well, not doing that. Um, I am. I have the collector's edition just over here. It came in the mail, so I'm good, definitely gonna be playing Bravely Second. But I want to get through the Cavalier demo first, and I was gonna play that on my trip to PAX East, and then I slept on pretty much all of my flights, so I barely. Oh, finished it. okay. It's on how long to beat, and the main story is four and a half hours. Oh yeah, that's this is nine and a half. Okay, that's that's, that's still that's, pretty damn good for a demo. Oh, no, for sure, yeah. A free one of that. Uh, I still listen to parts of the Bravely Default soundtrack. To be honest, I like the battle theme from the first from Bravely Default. I think is the best battle theme I've ever heard for an RPG. 
Oh, sorry. I'm just catching up on the question. Um, I'm giving Bravely Second a shot uh, this week. And memorable RPG soundtracks. Uh, Pretty much any Final Fantasy. Yeah, I don't know. Most of my game soundtracks, like none of them are really coming from RPGs now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, because you're more into like anything that has like a techno beat. Or yeah. Anything like that. RPG soundtracks, like all of the Final Fantasy stuff, basically. Uh, specifically 10. I love the music in 10. I really like mm-hmm. the music in 7, obviously, because it's iconic. Uh, Legend of Zelda music is still fantastic. Uh, what else is there for RPG stuff? Chrono Trigger music is some of the best RPG music. Uh, yeah, I like Chrono Trigger. That's true. Yep. I'm probably yeah. I'd have to. It's been so long since I've heard seven and and tens. Uh, I'm sure there's like a, a Tales game I'm way into. Undertale is like my favorite. Music. Oh yeah, I didn't even think of that as an RPG for a second like there, but you're time. right. Undertale. Undertale's got a really good soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's another part of the question. Also, with recent news about Zelda U being delayed and being released on the Wii U as well as the NX, people seem to enjoy making baseless assumptions such as the NX will be a home console. I find this to be rather annoying considering with, uh, considering with still have literally zero information regarding what the NX actually is. Do you think all these assumptions are pointless and we should be patient for more official details, or should we believe all the speculation may hold some ground and should be considered? No, because yeah, if is... we waited for details, this podcast would not exist. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, this is what got me thinking about, like, what is the console going to be when I was reading this question earlier. Obviously, yeah, wait, we don't know anything about it, so... Yeah. But, uh... I mean, all we have to go off of are the patents <clears throat> and their word of being, trying to aim for something that merges kind of their two fields. Or I think they want to say the annex would be, like, a third. Like, the only thing I can think of is if... If, it, if Zelda's coming out on both, then the handheld portion of it has to be, like, super minimal, right? Like yeah, a, like a, compa- so like a you, companion think- app. Okay, yeah, I didn't even think of that idea. Because if it's because I'm just thinking like Wii U versus 3DS. If you made a game for both of those, the 3DS one would be vastly inferior. Yeah, that's true. And I can't see Nintendo's next console being both, and they're on par. I, I unless they like it. built, unless the actual engine for like the graphics and everything is built into the controller itself. And then maybe it's like you get like a booster when you're plugged into the actual home version. Who knows? Like it's all speculation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I guess yeah I guess that could work too. But yeah, that's gonna be a, that's gonna fun. be a heavy mobile device. Yeah. I mean, the Game Gear existed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it also ate batteries. That's true. I also I picked up a Sega Nomad uh, while I was at PAX East. That's the thing that ate batteries. But that nice. was a portable Sega Genesis. Okay. All right yeah i don't know we'll have to wait and see word all right uh from twitter we only have two vgc kenny writes in saying excluding wii sports resorts and pilot wings resort which video game would you like to retire in wii sports resort is a good one because i remember playing that um it was like a plane game and all you did was just fly around the island but that was just super fun like exploring that island and the volcano and stuff that was cool what word i want to retire in i'm guessing like the things that are happening in the game are happening there as well right i guess that's what we implied because otherwise i'd say something like i want to live in sim city with cheat codes on so everything is fine well i mean what i was gonna say is like if not just cause three because that landscape is beautiful but i don't want like a dictator and people <laughs> blowing shit up everywhere <laughs> The Sims, but you can climb out of pools. Oh my god, yes, please. <laughs> uh, Dead or Alive 2 Extreme... Dead or Alive Extreme yep, 2? That's the right answer. Extreme <laughs> except that, Volleyball. Except every two weeks that island blows up. Yeah. But those girls seem fine. They always yeah, survive. Oh, they're I don't fine, understand right. how they survive. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Retire in... I guess the answer is like any game that you just kind of don't die repeatedly in. <laughs> I want to live in a world where Muscle March exists. Oh my god! Where I can watch that on TV, or just like I just go to go to a Muscle March event, I guess, or whatever. However, that would be. Yo, Proteus. 
Per- okay, just hanging out in like a pixelated field. Yeah. And in that regard, Firewatch. I, okay, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Oh, Firewatch is a really good one. You're right. Um, it's not out yet. No Man's Sky. Okay. I think that'd be good. Sure. Oh, you just want to retire to space, is what you're saying. Just on like a weird planet with like just with like my own ship, and it's just like I'm just gonna explore, man. I'm looking forward to that game. I'm also really looking forward to um, Uncharted Four comes out in like a week and a half. Whoa, is that soon? May 10th. Oh, damn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people are saying retire in Azur's Wrath. That <laughs> sounds like such it. a bad idea. That's so. Uh, that's not good. You would just die. I think everyone in that world like dies. Yeah. You just got to be super angry all the time, though. Yeah, like, and it'll make you stronger and then angrier. Yeah. All right. Last question comes in from Arthur. He says, "In Civil War fashion, team sauce or team cheese for pizza?" Cheese. Te- sauce. Okay. Here's my que- here's my question though. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a pizza if it doesn't have sauce, or is it just cheese bread now? Ooh. I think you're right. I think it's just deep fried cheese bread. Yeah, I'm good with that. Team cheese that's, on everything. That's, that's fair. That's. Fair. I mean, I'm I'm not a huge tomato person, so I'm going to pick cheese over tomato sauce all the time. Like, tomato sauce on pizza is fine, but cheese is amazing. But is it a pizza? Because you can have, like, bread, sauce. I, I feel like it's the sauce that officially makes it a pizza that's what i think Definition so too Definition of pizza let's like google oh decide this a dish of italian origin consisting of a flat round base of dough baked with a topping of tomato sauce and cheese it's both oh well well here's the thing i would argue it doesn't have to be tomato sauce i've had like a like um like I've a had white bread sauce sticks before or pesto. where i've dipped it in sauce like I that's think, true. I think if you, you dip both. breadsticks in tomato sauce. Is that now a pizza? Yo, no matter which team wins, pizza loses. I think no matter <laughs> which team wins, I like, was going to ask win. like which which team wants everyone to like register their real life identity. So <laughs> that seems like a team sauce type of move, right there. <laughs> everyone, in the, everyone in the chat is saying pizza needs sauce. No, because cheese bread is different from pizza. And then there's this one guy that says, "I don't really like pizza." <laughs> To <laughs> be fair, though, he finishes up, but I'll still eat it. Yeah, damn right, you'll said, still eat it. Who it's said pizza. That? Oh, Keon. All right. Yeah. Yeah, pizza with pesto sauce, which is delicious. Like, I feel like, man, I love cheese, but I don't know if I can call it like a pizza if it doesn't have sauce on it. Because then it's just like, then it's cheese bread. And I love cheese bread, don't get me wrong. I'll eat. I'll get down with so some all cheese. All I'm hearing is that you really still are on team cheese. I'm, well, I'm not calling it pizza if it's just sauce without cheese. Okay, here's my question. You're okay. presented with a slice. So you got a slice of bread yeah. or, you know, dough. And on it, you have cheese. And then the other one is a slice with sauce on it. Which one do you call the pizza? Which one is more pizza? I throw them both sauce. away and call Pizza Hut. No, 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 no. You combine the two pizza. and eat them together as a. As oh, a shit. You could combine them, but still, for this for this scientific study, which one is more pizza? Neither. The, neither one of them is any degree of pizza. They are zero pizza. I guess pizza. technically, if it's just a piece of bread with sauce on it, then it's like jam on toast. Okay, but that's a, that's <laughs> that has nothing to do with this. I don't like. I mean, I guess similarly. We're that, getting off topic on this dumb debate. <laughs> I, like I was saying, I like was just having this debate like half a week ago. I think I have to give it half some sauce. Half a week ago? What? Yeah, I would, like I said, I was talking to some friends. Like, is it still pizza without s- sauce? I, don't, I think it needs sauce. I'm, I'm still, I'm team sauce, 100%. No, fuck sauce. You're both wrong. Hey, all right, this is he's I, on team cheese. <laughs> I, if I was to eat one of those two slices, I would eat the cheese bread. That like hands down, that's gonna right. taste way better than I mean, dough with. Either one of the slices are sauce. from a pizza because they don't have both. So whatever. <laughs> okay, here's like, what would you rather eat? Someone gives you cheese pizza slice. It's got okay. sauce and cheese. Sure. They scrape off the cheese or they drain it of the sauce. Which one would you eat? Wait. So there's no cheese on the <clears throat> bread, and then there's then soggy the bread. One. Because you still have the flavor of sauce baked in the cheese, even no, if they get got, rid of it. They got rid of it. This is it's even twenty. If, even 20 if they got 18, rid of it, it doesn't matter. The it bakes in. This is twenty-eight. 
20. They figured out how to remove all of the sauce molecules. So you pick the one with that remains cheese. I'm going to be so pissed if future science decides <laughs> that's worth their time and what? not other what? stuff. <laughs> that's not so, your you know, all the scientists at Pizza Hut are going to be all over this in the future. Right, exactly. I would eat the cheese one, but I, I, in my heart of hearts, I can't call it a pizza. I'm impressed and not surprised that we've talked about this this long. Yo, pizza is coming to my doorstep right now. I'm pretty sure my friends. I, th I think we're actually ordering pizza tonight too. We yeah, dude, over ordering pizza. pizza's awesome. Does I think that that's we're gonna text each other as soon as we get our pizzas and like, oh, let's tweet each other pictures. Pizza's wait, so wait, good. Wait, like wait, uh, this is not Instagram. Do you want me to? <laughs> it could. Be. Reese is probably gonna do it anyways. Reese is probably gonna take a picture of the pizza. <laughs> I'm gonna go hog on some pizza tonight. Like you don't even know. <laughs> All right. Sean, if as soon as my pizza questions. comes, I'm going to send you a picture of me eating a piece of pizza, <laughs> giving a thumbs up. Do it. Yeah. Just tweet that out to the world. I will. Share that pizza Hashtag love. Team Cheese. You'll see. <laughs> Get this trending. I feel like I feel like even though I'm on I'm on Team Sauce and you're on Team Cheese, we're all on Team Pizza. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the moral of the story. If people want to send in questions next week, it's topdownperspective at gmail.com at TDP Podcast on Twitter or the Facebook group or John's P.O. Box. What's your guys' games of the week? Dark Souls 3. I forgot what I played. Sorry. Uh, Apologize. Po pocket Card Jockey. Par the demo of Pocket Card Jockey. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. We will see you next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>